Praise the Lord, everyone. If we could all stand. You know, today's Pentecost Sunday, so I don't feel like I really need to go into some big old long thing. But can we just open service today with praise and worship and just say, God, we're here for you on this Pentecost Sunday.
breath of the Holy Ghost that's keeping us alive. Hallelujah. Thank God for His Spirit that is working, His Spirit that is moving even right now. Hallelujah. Whatever you need in the Lord, you can have it today. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to uh, take our needs before the Lord right now. Uh, we need to pray for Sister Carol Massey. God will keep His hand upon her and uh, Don Jr. Massey, that God would keep his hand upon him, and many in need of uh, in need of a healing, amen, and Kathy Coates, and Sue Duncan, amen, Arlene Rose, uh, even some who are with us today, Brother Brent, amen, and just uh, and others as well, amen, thank God that he's with us today, amen, God brought him through a surgery, that's awesome. So uh, we, we've got a lot of people that uh, need healing touch from the Lord. But you know, uh, God is a healer. Amen. He took those stripes upon his back for our healing, right? Amen. Amen. By his stripes, the Bible says, you were healed. Amen. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. And if you have... Uh, it's mentioned a few unspoken requests, but if you have an unspoken request, just raise your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Praise God. All right, why don't we just uh, go before the Lord in prayer right now and take these needs and requests before Him and knowing that He is able. There's nothing impossible in the Lord. Let's believe Him together today, saints, as we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Uh, we would like for uh, Brother Carl, if you would, to pray over these requests. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise and thank Him. Please hear our pride. Let's really give the Lord a praise right now. Let's just give the Lord a shout. Oh, God, I got the Holy Ghost down in my soul, just like the Bible says. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Ushers, would you come? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, God, for what we feel in the house of the Lord. God, your presence, your glory, you are here in this place. God, I pray, Lord, as we gather, we 
worship you in spirit and in truth. And we worship you in our giving today, being faithful unto you. Lord, giving of our tithe and our offering, giving of our offerings, Lord, to missions and all the other departments. God, I pray today, we do it out of a heart of worship unto you. For, Lord, you blessed us. You blessed us beyond words. God, I pray today you multiply it. And I pray souls added to the kingdom. I pray people receiving the Holy Ghost, being baptized in your name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.
sin. That's it. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hand of Jesus touch me nothing matters before that when that happens when then the hand of Jesus touch me thank you Jesus Help me, Sister Missy. Lord, prepare me to be a presence of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We lift our hands filled with faith. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just entertain the Holy Ghost for a moment. Let's just entertain the presence of God. Oh, God, I feel you in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I 
I got to tell somebody today that if you need a renewing in the Holy Ghost, it's here. If you need a refreshing, if you need a refreshing in the Holy Ghost, it's here. I feel a deliverance in the house. I feel a deliverance in the house. I, I feel healing in the house. Maybe there's some things in your life that's kind of got stuck. I feel a shaking loose today. Some things, time to loosen them up a little bit. Hallelujah. The Sunshine Kids going out or staying in? My Sunshine Kids, you're dismissed. Let me, let me announce to all the Sunshine Kids one thing before you go. Starting the 1st of June, first Sunday of June, the teens will no longer be part of Sunshine Kids. You'll be staying in the main sanctuary. That's from ages, Nick, 11 and up will remain in the sanctuary. You will have one, uh, there will be a service a month for teenagers that will be dismissed. Uh, on a specific Sunday, and you will have uh, have that on a specific Sunday. So that will start in June. Stand with me if you would, John chapter 20. Jesus has been crucified, buried. That morning he rose from the dead. Mary Magdalene and the other women had went to the sepulcher, finding the sepulcher open and the body gone. They ran and told the other disciples, Simon Peter and the others, uh, of what they had seen. They're still living in the response of those days as it comes to verse 19 of chapter 20 where it says then the same eve same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. I say that this morning to you, receive ye the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. For the next few minutes, I want to preach to you on the subject. It's over. Or is it? It's over. Or is it? Let's pray. God, in your great name, I thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord, for the strength of what I feel in this place right now. I thank you for what you are getting ready to do in this house. I pray right now by the authority of your word and the power in the name of Jesus, for I have come to this pulpit in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. 
And I speak right now, Lord God, a liberty in the Holy Ghost to minister today. I pray against every distraction. I pray right now, Lord, against every hindrance. In the name of Jesus, I pray against every spirit that would try to hinder the work of God on this Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. <coughs> and Lord, I pray you rend the heavens. And Lord, you open the heavens today. And God, you pour out of your spirit upon this congregation on Pentecost Sunday. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory, lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your voices to God. I praise you today, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. If it's been a while since you prayed through, I pray today you pray through again. You get this thing all over again. You get a refilling and a renewing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. When you start studying the ministry of the Lord, you look into the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you're going to find that Jesus was into anything but an introvert. Jesus was not an introvert. Now, folks, I, whether you believe it or not, I, I was an introvert. I was very much an introvert. As a matter of fact, my mom would say I would be, they would have company and and, and, and people would ask where I was. And mom would turn and say, he's right there. I would be in the room for hours. No one would know it. I, I, I would be so quiet, so timid that, that no one would know it. But God is not an introvert. God is not a wallflower that just stands by and just kind of watches things go on. And God and things progress, but when you look into the New Testament, God inserted himself into situations that were absolutely impossible. God inserted himself into problems. He, he put, placed himself, and I don't believe, I don't believe for one second that wherever Jesus was, he was there by appointment. He was there by assignment. He was there with a purpose. He didn't just walk by one day and Bartimaeus be on the side of the road by chance. Jesus was there for that was the appointed time. That was the moment of his miracle. I wonder today if this is the moment of your miracle. If today is the moment of God intervening and God touching you. There may have been some interactions where it looked like chance, but it wasn't. There may have been some moments that, <coughs> that it was just, it seemed like it was just, just, just. Some <coughs> something that just kind of happened, but it didn't. I remember in Luke chapter 5, Jesus comes to the, 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 edge of the sea the people are following him he's trying to teach them and literally they press him and press him till he's got no place to go but into a boat and there happens to be a fisherman there by the name of Simon and Simon is cleaning his nets he's been out all night long cleaning and he, he's been fishing hasn't caught a thing I know fishermen like that <laughs> One of these days I'm going to preach a message about the fishermen that quit fishing. Because there's some of us, we've quit fishing for souls. I, I'm going to preach a message one day about the fishermen that quit fishing. He comes up and, and, and he is so pressed, he's trying to teach the multitude. So, so he finally looks at Simon and says, let's, let's get in your boat and cast out a little bit. And, and they cast out and, 
he, he uh, stands in that boat, and as he, as he gets out there, and the Bible says he sits, that boat, that boat became his platform, and the, the bow of that boat became his pulpit. And he stood there, and he, he spoke to the people and taught them. And the Bible says when he had finished saying, you see, P, Simon thought it was over. Simon thought, I'm cleaning my nets, time to go home. We're going to get home and have, have some, well, they wouldn't have bacon. We'll have some fruit for breakfast. Some best fruit I ever ate was in Israel. And they, 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 were, they thought it was over. They thought they were done. And, and Jesus said, cast your, cast your net. And he said, well, I just finished cleaning my net. No, I said, cast, cast your net. I've been out here all night fishing and haven't caught a thing. But at thy word, he said. But at thy word. I, I, I don't know what it was Jesus was teaching on, but there was something that brought faith up into the heart of Simon. And Simon said, all right, I'll cast my net. And he thought it was over. But when he threw that net in the water, he caught more fish than he could handle. The Bible says he had to call for his partners, and they had to come out and help him to get it in. He thought it was over, but is it? When Jesus steps up, it doesn't have to be over. Same chapter, Jesus, Jesus comes, the Bible says, doesn't even say where it's at, a certain city. And there's a man that comes to him, and the Bible says he is full of leprosy. Doesn't just say he has leprosy. He is full of leprosy. He was covered, covered with leprosy. Now, let me tell you something. Leprosy was pretty much a death sentence. It was pretty much, now it was a prolonged death sentence. But it was pretty much in that day a death sentence. There, there was no treatment. There, there, there was nothing that doctors could do. As a matter of fact, the, the, the response, and it was in the law, the response was, if you have leprosy, you have to separate yourself from your family. You have to separate yourself from your city. You have to separate yourself from anyone that, that doesn't have leprosy. So as a leper, you become the outcast. As a leper, you become somebody that has no interaction with society. You can't even go to church. You're barred from the temple because of your leprosy. He was a dead man walking. And he, for him, it was over. For him, it was going to be a slow death covered with leprosy. It's over. But the Bible says in Luke chapter 5, I, he sought the Lord. He cried out to God. He would not be silent. If thou winst, wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus' response was simple. I will be thou clean. And for this man, that it was over. For this man, that doctors or no other man could do anything for him. For this man, the Bible says, and don't you love this word, immediately. Uh, one minute, he's under a death sentence. The next minute... He's walking in the favor and healing of God. One minute, he's covered. Next minute, those sores have closed up on him. And he no longer has a sign of leprosy on his body. For the Bible says leprosy departed from him. Oh, he said it was, they said it was over, but it wasn't over. Same chapter. Jesus is teaching in a house. Luke chapter 5, Jesus is teaching in a house. The house is so full, you can't get close to the door. You can't get close to a window. There's so many people. The scribes are there. The Pharisees are there. They're sitting around. Jesus is teaching in the house. And there come some men. And they bring a man on a stretcher, a paralytic. 
they bring him on a stretcher and they bring him to get to Jesus. And when they get there, there was no access. When they get there, there was no way to get him in. When they get there, I can only imagine the disappointment, not only on their face, but on the face of the paralytic man. I came with hope, but now there's no hope. It's over. I, 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 I might as well go home. It's over. I, go ahead and take me back to the nursing home. It's over. Go ahead and just give up on me. It's over. Just go ahead. Take me back. Forget about me. It's over. You know what? Their faith wouldn't let them leave. Their faith would not let them leave. You know it's faith. You know it's faith when, when you're not feeling good and you come to church anyway. I got to get my, Brother Johnson's going to have a prayer line tonight. I got to get up there and get in that prayer line because I know God will touch me if I get in that prayer line. You know it's faith. When people won't, won't, let, won't let things keep them back and away from church, you, you know it's faith. I remember, I remember a lady, she'd been coming to church in North Charleston for some time and, and she, she was new to Pentecost, new to, new to everything Pentecost. And, and she came, and we'd been praying for her, trying to pray her through the Holy Ghost. She'd come up every altar service. Oh, she'd pray and pray and pray. Nothing. Nothing. We'd pray. She, it, it was like praying against a brick wall. And we'd pray. We'd, we kept praying with her. Come on, sister. Come on, sister. That's it. Holy Ghost is here. Believe it. Believe it. God fill her with the Holy Ghost. And we were praying. We'd work up a sweat. Praying with this lady. And one morning, I was down in the foyer, usually where I was, because I'd, I'd always position myself to greet people coming in the door. And I was an elder. I wasn't an usher. I was an elder in the church, but I always made sure I was there to greet people. And, and, and she came in, and, and she came up, and she looked me eye in the eye. Brother, Brother Webb, she came up and got my hand. We were shaking hands. And she looked me eye to eye, and she said, Today I get the Holy Ghost. That's what she said. She said, today I get the Holy Ghost. And then she, I, I'm telling you, it, it almost scared me, Brother Lenny. <laughs> today I get the Holy Ghost. And we at church, she worshiped like she always did. She, the only difference, normally she said about three quarters of the way back, you know, faith will move you up. And, and, and she said about three quarters of the way back, this time she was on the third pew, back on the left-hand side, over here. She'd sit with, be sitting with Sister Kelsey is, and, 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 and she, she was there. And she just, nothing changed about her worship. She worshiped and sang with the, with the courses and all that we did on Sunday morning. And, and then the altar call message came forth, and the altar call was given. But there was something different when, when the altar call was given. Because when the altar call was given, she didn't wait for anybody else to come. Now, I know how some of you all are because I've seen it. You'll come if somebody else does. Hello, hallelujah, amen, glory to God. You, you, you'll step out if somebody else, if some, I, man, I really need to go. Come on, Brother Carl. Come on, step out, Brother Carl. I'll go for you. That's why it's true. It's true. But faith won't let you do that. And she stepped out first. And she came down first. By the time she got over, there wasn't anybody else up there. She stepped out so fast. She was waiting for that altar service. And she got up there and her hands went up in the air. We, she didn't wait for us to come over. She didn't wait for somebody to lay hands on her. She, she, her. Her hands went up in the air, and she started praising God. We got over there and started praying with her, and within a matter of probably two minutes, she was talking in tongues as the Spirit of God gave her the utterance. Why? She came with faith. And faith would not let these men go home. Faith would not let them walk away. Faith said, you know what? If there's not a way, we'll make a way. If we can't get in the door, we'll make a way. 
<coughs> Somebody grab that ladder over there. Let's get up on this roof. If we can't go in the normal way, we'll go in the crazy way. And they tore that roof off, and they, they, they had to make a big enough hole. I don't know. Probably had to be bigger than that to get that, get that cot down through. I mean, I don't know who owned the house. But they made a hole in his roof, and they led him down right in front of Jesus. And what did the Bible say? When Jesus saw their Faith. When Jesus saw their faith, he, he, he looked at that man and he said, Thy sins be forgiven thee. Well, that stirred it up. That got the scribes and the Pharisees all kind of ruffled. And who does he think he is to forgive sin? Only God can forgive sin. Well, they weren't wrong. He just happened to be God. And, they, and Jesus, the Bible says, he perceived their thoughts. He picked up on their spirit. And he asked them, you tell me which is easier, to forgive sin or to say, say that, you're, that this man is healed? And he looked at him and he said, rise and walk. And that man got up, picked up his little cot, People made way for him, and the Bible says he went home. He went home here. He came on, he came on a cot. Oh, he, they thought it was over, but it wasn't over. Oh. He rose up, picked up his bed, and walked. Over and over again in Scripture, there was a, there was a man. He was blind from birth. Man could do nothing for him. Nothing. There was nothing man could, there were no surgeries back then to, to, correct, to correct blindness. There aren't very many today, depending on the situation. And, and, and they, uh, th this man was, was born from birth. It was, it, 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 that was pretty much a, a, a sentence for him for life. It's over. No sight. He was destined to die the way he was born, without sight. In darkness. And the Bible says that Jesus spit on the ground. Made some clay. Put it in his eyes. And sent this man, this blind man. To wash in the pool of Siloam. And when he washed in the pool of Siloam. Guess what? Not, not blind anymore. Oh they. It was over a minute ago. It was over a minute ago. But oh what God can do in a minute. Oh, what God can do immediately. You know the story of the woman with the issue of blood, spent everything she had on doctors, pressed her way through the crowd, thought it was over. Done everything she could do. Till she touched the end of his garment. And immediately, immediately was made whole. The woman who was following her son's casket, the widow of Nain, talk about it being over. No heartbeat, no breath, no blood flowing, no brain activity. On their way to the cemetery, mourners in tow, they're, 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 they're taking him. Man could do nothing for him. Impossibility. But Jesus shows up. Touches the beer. Touches the coffin. And the Bible says that child set up straight. One minute. One minute. Dead. Over. It's over. Next minute. Breathing. Looking for his mom. Mom, where are you? Mom, where are you? I'm right here, son. It was over a minute ago, but it's not over now. You see, that's how the disciples felt. 
That's how the disciples felt when they were locked in that room, gathered together, the door locked behind them. It wasn't just the door that was locked. It was their spirits that were locked. I wonder if there's anybody here today that's got some things locked up here. I wonder if there's some folks in here today that's got some things locked up right here. It's, it, wasn't, it wasn't just the door that was locked. There was discouragement. There was despair. There was hopelessness. One day, they were doing miracles. The next day, Jesus was arrested, tried, crucified. They thought he was going to be their deliverer. He was going to deliver them from the Roman Empire. He was going to deliver them from Roman rule. But now, we're locked in this room and it's over. Because Jesus is dead. In their minds, it was over. In their hearts, it was over. You ever been that way? It's over. Nothing else. I know no man, Brother Johnston can't do anything about it. It's over. I, the bank can't do anything about it. It's over. Doctor can't do anything about it. It's over. Been there. They saw the crucifixion and they watched as they drove the nails in his hands and his feet and shoved a spear in his side. And they watched him die. In their minds, it's over. Oh, they had such hope. They had such high hopes for what was the ministry they were going to have. And they saw themselves continuing after uh, uh, continuing doing what Jesus was doing. But, but now he's gone. They went out two by twos, casting out devils. Came back rejoicing that even the devils were subject. Now, it's over. It's over. Everything they saw told them it's over. Everything they heard told them it's over. He tried. He was a good man. He tried. He meant well. He meant well. There have been times, I can't remember his name. You'll, you, you'll remember his name. He was in the hospital. They lived there when you come around close to where that celebration church is. In, in there at Patrick Street. Come around and they lived there on the left. Brother Dawson. Brother Dawson. Dawson, an older, older man, came to the Lord in the latter part of his life, he was, he was quite a character and he lived quite a life. And, and uh, he came to the Lord late in his life. And they called the family in. He was in the hospital, called the family in, said, said you, need to, you need to say your goodbyes. Brother, Brother Dawson is going is to uh, pass away here real soon. So you need, to, you need to say your goodbyes to your dad and say goodbyes. And, so on and so forth, and, and we went up and prayed for Brother Dawson as we always did, and we went and prayed, God comfort the family, God touch Brother Dawson, Lord heal his body, and uh, uh, maybe, maybe in my mind I was thinking, well, maybe that's not the right thing to pray right now, but we prayed it, prayed Lord heal his body, and I think that was at, on a, the end of the week, and by Sunday, by Sunday, they said he was going home on Monday. They were discharging him because he, there was nothing wrong with him. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The doctor may say we've done everything we can do. And the banker may say we've done everything we can do. And, and the lawyer may say it. And even your spouse may say we've done everything we do. It's over. But the word impossible is not in God's vocabulary. The word impossible. Possible. God does not understand the word impossible. God does not speak. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that with God all things 
all things are possible. All things are possible to him that believeth. Oh, somebody, somebody ought to get a hold of some faith right now and say, God, I'm believing this. Thank you, preacher. I'm believing this. With God, all things are possible. When you believe God, when you trust God, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. And these disciples who had experienced so much walking with Jesus, the light had literally left them and they, they were literally in darkness in this room and the joy had turned to despair and their faith had turned to fear and fear was holding them bondage. The Bible says they were locked in that room because of fear. Oh, I need to stop right here and I, I, I need to stop right here for a minute. Because there are a whole lot of people that fear is holding them in bondage. There's a whole lot of people that fear has got them locked in a room. And I know fear has got tentacles that run every, every which way. And, and, and some people living in fear of sickness. Some people living in fear of disease. Some people living in fear of failure. Some people living in fear of tomorrow. Some people living in fear of rejection. Some people living in fear of the economy. And it goes on and on and on and on. But let me tell you something about fear. Whatever name you put on it, whatever, whatever it is that you allow fear to, to, to put chains on you, whatever chains you allow to, to, to uh, hold you back, and to neutralize you because fear paralyzes and fear bring, puts you in bondage and fear brings confusion and fear brings feelings of helplessness. But God has not given us the spirit of fear. We need to quit living in fear. Put Romans 8.15 up. For well, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Fear is a bondage. But you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You, re you have received the spirit of relationship. That you have a relationship with God. And God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power. Hello. But of power. But of power. But of power. And of love. And listen to this. Listen to this. And of a, oh, of a sound mind. That's what God has given you. He's not giving you the spirit of fear under bondage, but he's giving you the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. I don't know why I had to camp out there for a little bit, but I got a feeling I know. Somebody in here dealing with it. Somebody in here bound by it. And it's time you get those chains to fall behind you. It's time those chains loose off you. It's time God set you free. It's time for you to get your deliverance. The disciples understood that fear. They were living in their own darkness, their own confusion, their own hopelessness. And while they're in there bound by that, the Bible says right through the wall came Jesus. Right through the wall came Jesus. Let me tell you something. 
You want to, you know, all those miracles we talked about earlier, those things out in the paralytic, the, the woman with the issue of blood, the, the, the leper, and, 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 and so forth, all of those. God does not hide from tough things. God does not run from big problems. I don't know where we get that idea. I, I don't know what devil lied to us and told us that God just kind of uh, ignores all of those things that we're dealing with. In our, God doesn't ignore them. God shows up in the middle of them. God steps right in behind locked doors. You can lock a door and Jesus will still come in. He doesn't shy away. As a matter of fact, when you think all hope is gone, I'm talking to somebody online today. I'm talking to you. When you think all hope is gone, and when you've, you've said all you can say and you've done all you can do and you've prayed as much as you can pray and you, you've quoted as many Bible verses as you can quote and you've cried as many tears as you can cry and when everybody else uh, around you is, is agreeing with you in that situation and you just sit there and, and, and that situation and say it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over. Jesus steps right in and Jesus is ready to step right in to your situation right now. Jesus Jesus is ready to step right in to that room where you have locked the door and you've held on to that. It wasn't over for the fisherman and it wasn't over for the paralytic and it wasn't over for the woman with the issue of blood and it wasn't over for the woman who was marching behind her son's body and it's not over for you. While Jesus walks in and he says, peace be unto you. And he shows him the scars in his hands and in his sides. And he said, as my father, put, or thank you, as my father has sent me, even so send I you. Now look at that. These men who are hiding for fear. Jesus walks in and says, I'm sending you. I'm commissioning you. You're, you're, you're in this room, but you're not staying in this room. Hello, somebody. You're, you're, you're locked behind the door right now, but you're not staying behind the door because I'm sending you. But if I'm going to send you, I got to give you something. If I'm going to send you and you're, you're locked in this room, then I've got to give you something. So in your hopelessness, in your fear, in your situation, peace be unto you, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. God's still saying it today. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. We look into the Old Testament and we see God moving and we see the Spirit of the Lord. Genesis 1 1. Creation bears this out. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And here's what He created. I want you to look. This is what it was when it was first created. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now God could have created, he could have spoke, and everything at one time just come into place. Everything at one time could have just, earth, moon, stars, planets, universes. Sun, darkness, water, land, animals, all of that could have happened. Yet God created. God knew that in 2024, people were going to be dealing with confusion, that people were going to be dealing with circumstances, 
that people were going to be dealing with things that didn't make sense, that they were going to be locked in rooms. God knew. So he said, i got to show them something at the very beginning. It's void. It's without form. It's confusion. Darkness on the deep, face of the deep. But what happened? Read it. And and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. All of a sudden, that creation that was so, so just, just a conglomeration of gases and this and that and stuff. All of a sudden, the spirit moved and confusion began to take shape. All of a sudden, the spirit moved and what, what looked like nothing all of a sudden became something. All of a sudden, the spirit moved. I'm telling you today, in the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. God knew that if he was going to restore the relationship with humanity like he had with Adam when he walked with him in the cool of the day, <coughs> that if he was going to restore that righteousness that that first man had, he had to send the second man, which was Christ. And Christ had to become the substitute for you and I so that we, our sins, could be covered by the blood of a pure sacrifice, being Jesus Christ. And he knew that that even, even covered by the blood, he knew that if we were going to be righteous and we were going to be holy, he had to impart to us his righteousness and his holiness. And to do that, he had to come and abide on the inside of me and you. Ezekiel. Chapter 36, verse 25, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. And from all your filthiness, and from all your idols, will I cleanse you. Brother Jed said it this morning, thank God for forgiveness. Thank God for forgiveness. And a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Next verse. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. Let me tell you something. I got the Holy Ghost February 5th, 1989. Who else remembers when they got the Holy Ghost? Sister Kathy? What day? You remember? All right. Who else remembers the day? You remember the day? Anybody else? Sister Teresa. Wow. Last day of the year. Was that a night watch service? Watch night service? It was. Watch night service? Wow. Last day of the year, God filled with the Holy Ghost. How many men? You don't have to tell me the day. Just remember when you got the Holy Ghost. How many? Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I got the Holy Ghost. He said, I will put my spirit in you and within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. If we're going to walk in the righteousness of God, God has to impart righteousness to us. If we're going to walk in holiness, because our righteousness is as filthy rags before God. So we can't bring our righteousness to the table. we got to bring his righteousness to the table. That's why we'll walk in his statutes, and we'll keep his judgments, and we will do them. That's why we've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon 
all flesh. That's every one of you. That's everyone in this place. That's everyone watching online. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And also upon my servants and upon the handmaids those days will I pour out of my spirit. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. When you think it's over, disciples thought it's over. But it wasn't over. They thought they were done. Three and a half years they had invested in Jesus. And they thought it was over. But Jesus said, there's more. There's more beyond Calvary. There's more. That was the mind of God from the beginning. That was the mind of God from the beginning. Jesus said in John 14, 26, he said, I will send you a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. This was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. And the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Acts chapter 2, verse 2. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. It was quite a sight that day to witness that event as tongues of fire sat upon them. But that wasn't the sign they'd received the Holy Ghost. The sign was not the rushing mighty wind. The Bible says they, when they received the Holy Ghost, they spoke in other tongues or in other languages as the Spirit gave them the utterance. That was the sign that God had filled them with the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody here that can testify that God is still pouring out His Spirit in 2024? Before I came to the Lord, I worked with a lot of different people, a lot of Christians by different faiths. And there was one couple that I worked with that said to me, I never even told my wife this, said to me, we don't even pray for you. So we don't even pray for you because you'll never get saved. We don't even pray for you. They saw me as hopeless. They saw me as hopeless. But I besought the Lord. And he filled T.J. Johnson with the Holy Ghost. Anybody here that knows if God hadn't filled you with the Holy Ghost, you'd be strung out on drugs somewhere. If God hadn't filled you with the Holy Ghost, you'd be living in some wicked, ungodly relationship. If God hadn't filled you with the Holy Ghost, you'd be locked up in some mental institution or even dead. That would probably have been my fate. But God filled me with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling somebody today. Somehow you've ended up behind locked doors. Somehow you've ended up behind locked doors. It's time to pray through again. It's time to realize Jesus has stepped in. And Jesus is right there. I don't know about I don't know about you, but that ought to to me that ought to make some of us shout in here. You've been praying for your kids to come to God, and they've been behind locked doors, and and you've been praying for them. And Jesus isn't stopped by locked doors. Jesus can walk right in where they're at. You can pray a river of the Spirit. Oh my God! 
you can pray a river of the Spirit into their home. You can pray a river of the Spirit into the White House, as wicked as it is. But you can pray a river of the Spirit into it. Those, those, those Marines can't stop it. Those anti, what are they? Missiles? Anti-something missiles. Can't stop it. President can't stop it. You can pray a river of the Spirit. He'll come into a troubled marriage. He, he, he'll walk right through the wall. He, he'll, he'll come into a situation. You may think you locked the door and no one knows, but Jesus knows. There's some things people in here haven't told me. You've been struggling with. You've been dealing with. And you haven't even told me. But Jesus knows. You've shut the door, but Jesus knows. And I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel, I, mm, Jesus knows. He'll come right in. And maybe, I, I, I don't know, I don't think it's maybe. I'm talking to somebody. I know I'm talking to somebody online. I feel like I'm talking to somebody in this congregation this morning. You've been behind it, hiding behind locked doors. And you've not been honest. You're not even being honest with yourself. You're convincing yourself say things are okay and they're not. But Jesus knows. He knows where you're at. And he knows what's in that room. And he knows what you're doing. And he'll come right to you. It's not over. It's not over. I'm not telling you it's over. It's not over. Jesus will come right into that room. I want you to stand with me right now. I want you to stand in this room. I want you to make your way out. Make your way up to the front. We're going to come to the end of this service. We're going to pray. There's going to be a renewing in the Holy Ghost. There's going to be a refreshing. Some of us just need a blessing. Some of us just, we just need a flat out blessing in the Holy Ghost today. And we're going to get a blessing in this place. God's going to do a work. He's got somebody he wants to set free today. Somebody that he wants to deliver today. You've locked the doors and you've put yourself behind the doors. And, and for some reason, you, you have a, you, you've tried to hide behind that. And God has revealed that to you and maybe even revealed that to me. And you need to realize today that God is right there with deliverance in his hands. He's ready to deliver you uh, before we do anything. Now, we're going we're gonna to take some steps here and we're going to get to a point. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lift up some praise. For a little bit. We're just going to praise him. <coughs> Before we do anything else. <coughs> throw your hands in the air. And just start praising him. And let's start filling the Holy Ghost. Start moving over this place. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Oh, I worship you. 